Hello, Mr. Mehta. Welcome to the budget with Business Standard. So to start with, if you can share your expectations from the upcoming budget. You know, first as a business people, we do require consistency of policy and rates. Last year was a much more challenging budget because the economy was reeling under a negative growth. And even under those circumstances, Madam Finance Minister resisted raising rates. I don't think she would raise rates this year, and she should not. The second is, if you look at it from a macro perspective, there are two things which need to improve. One is private consumption, which if you look at it over a period of years has come down a bit. The second is, if you look at it over a period of a decade, the private capital investment has come from the high 30s and nearly 39% at the beginning of the last decade to nearly about 31%. So during this period, the government spending will have to pay up. So what I'm alluding to is that the government should not sharply worry about reducing the fiscal deficit, but put money where you will get a multiplier effect on the economy. And those are things like investment and infrastructure. So if you do that, then as the consumption goes up, then, you, you, you know, capital investment or uh, is not happening because the capacity utilization is still in low 70s. You know, when the demand comes in, capacity utilization will go up, then capital investment will happen, and then the virtuous spiral will start. So in the intervening period, the government will have to play a big part, and they should aggressively the other part will be is for Reserve Bank. I think Reserve Bank has uh, uh, wonderfully managed the monetary policy in the last couple of years. And now it would be a bit more challenging because they have to ensure that the inflation doesn't spiral out of control. And at the same time, ensure that you do not stifle growth. So it would be a very fine balancing act by the RBI. And uh, last but not the least is relief to the poor, which is putting more money in the hands of more people. One is rural poor and the other is urban poor. What happens with the urban poor? How do you address the issues there? Even they have lost jobs due to the pandemic. So right, Charlene. Government in the last two years have done a lot for the rural poor. My expectation would be a Manrega equivalent for urban poor should also be done because there are a lot of poor people who have lost their jobs. Just to give you an idea that we cater to restaurants through our Unilever of Food Solutions. And when I was reviewing the business, it transpired that nearly 30% of the restaurants have closed down in the country. Then a lot of contact businesses, travel, tourism have been impacted. So yes, urban poor. Also, they need, they are stressed people. They also need to be helped. Sir, it's said that India is a large agri-produce market, but not much seems to have happened on the ground in terms of uh, exports. So are PLI schemes enough to address this or is there something more than is required? Yeah. See, see you, you know, it is. Uh, I always say that uh, it is and and not either or. Now, what does PLI scheme does? When you look at exports, we have to compete on cost, on quality, on service, and innovations. Then only you can compete on exports. Now, most countries, if you look at, they have been focusing on exports. In sectors where they have a competitive advantage, or where they have created a competitive advantage. Now, historically, gems, jewelries are where we have got a competitive advantage. But if we have to create competitive advantage, then you need the benefit of scale. And what PLI does is, helps you create that competitive advantage by giving you the benefit of scale. So I believe PLI are the right things to be done because we have picked up focus sectors, right? 13 odd sectors. And there the government is saying this would be linked to incremental production. And this will allow people to scale it up, to invest behind the exports. It's absolutely the right thing. So, you know, this year our exports have been decent. For quite a few period, they were languishing in the vicinity of $300 billion. Now merchandise exports 
are, you know, should be reaching $400 billion this year. So which would be nearly a $100 billion increase this year, which is a pretty good increase. Now the question is, how do we sustain it? So one is this bit, giving the benefit of scale and enabling, creating competitive advantage in the industry. And the second bit is, uh, we will have to become a major R&D and innovation center, which are. Thanks a lot, Sanjeev. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn.